If you're not alive, uh, you're missing it. To, to be a, revived means to be alive, right? <laughs> so let's say it together. Revive us, Lord. Revive us, Lord. Revive us again. See, every day when you wake up, you know, you should have a funeral and then you should uh, recognize that you're alive. <laughs> Paul said, I die daily. And so that meant every day when he woke up, he, he got up and said uh, he had a funeral. So that's what I do. I look in the mirror and my body goes, I don't want to get up. And I say, shut up. What is a dead man? Doesn't feel anything. Uh, you just go right ahead and do what you have to do. Okay, I'm going to go real quickly because I have a lot of ground to cover. And you pray for us as we go because this is, uh, I've never shared this before and I've taken almost three days to get this ready to just try to put it in some kind of order. But uh, last night the man who was a speaker prophesied over me that the angel would come and whisper and he's been, that angel's been whispering to me all day, Michael, and all night I could hardly sleep. (laughs) So, woo, thank you, Lord. When I laid down just for five minutes a while ago, I said, Lord, uh, uh, can you tell that angel just to be quiet a minute? Let me rest for just one minute. But really, I had to repent. I, I, I had to ask him to forgive me. Oh, thank you, Lord. When the, when the angels come to download, we want to be happy. Put your ear, hands on your ears and say, I have ears to hear what the Spirit says to me. Yeah, I have eyes to see what the Spirit reveals to me. I have a heart to obey. I have hands to touch. <laughs> And feet to walk into the perfect will of God. Hmm. I'll never be the same. Never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Give him the glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. You know, uh, in this day we're calling fire down from heaven. And we're not doing it like they did in the Old Testament. But we're really, with the fervor of our soul, we're asking God for change, right? And that we want him to begin with us. Burn up the dross in us. And execute your kingdom on earth. Hallelujah. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. Let's get out of the way and let God do what he wants to. Amen. <laughs> it's My mom used to tell me I was in the way all the time when I was a kid. You know, get out of the way. But now this is one time we need to be in the way. His way. Right? Hallelujah. Get over our way and be in his way. Glory to God. Okay, so tonight I want to share uh, testimonies of revivals that... I, uh, Al and I, or just me alone, have, pop, uh, have uh, experienced in our lifetime. I'm 78 years old, and I'm still experiencing revival. Here we go again, Michael. <laughs> Here we go again. I just want to live in it all the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody prayed for me over the phone today, and they, one of our other spiritual sons, I'll mention him uh, later on, he's, he prayed for me to have a spirit, probably not to have a spiritual overhaul while we're here. <laughs> How you like that? Will you agree with that? <laughs> yeah. It is working. Yes, amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Look in the mirror. Can you can see it? Faith, I've had a faith lift. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> when the Lord began downloading to me a uh, night before last, he woke and wakened me at 4 o'clock in the morning and he He started sharing with me the difference between a revival and these other words that people call it. And he talked about the difference between a revival and an encounter. So listen now. Or an outpouring. When we say revive us again, we're we're sort of like saying take us back to a previous place or condition where we were. We really don't want that, do we? Do we? (laughs) Uh, To bring us back to life to... In the medical field, it's called to resuscitate somebody who they, who, when they have died or collapsed. You no longer can get a pulse. And sometimes when you're preaching, you look out at the congregation, and you feel like there's no pulse out there. There's no life. Are they breathing, you know? So um, I went to the dictionary, and it, uh, to revive means to revivalize, to renew, to perk up, to restore, to refresh, to restart. And what I see right now is a dead battery. <laughs> And you've got to get it charged up so you can restart the car, right? Restart. Stimulate. Oh, my. We need to have a, a, something at the door that just sort of gives everybody a charge as they walk in, right? But if they get involved in worship, they can get a recharge, right? <laughs> and it means to breathe life into. Woo. Mm. And to reawaken. Now, that means there's something has to be there in order to reawaken it. So this is, what, this is why I'm sort of opposed to using the word revival, because it just means 
a lot of negative things. It means to take us back to where we were. Now, the opposite of that, listen to me very carefully now, the opposite of to revive means to kill or to let die. Mm. You'll, re you'll remember that as we go along. One of the seven great awakenings I've personally experienced, three of them were killed or stopped by man. Mm. Say, ugh. Don't say, wow, say, ugh. <laughs> man was created for fellowship with God. Say, amen. Man was created in the image and likeness of God. It's true that God had to create a man to worship him, a God-man. He had to create another God to worship him. A God-man, a man like him to worship him. Mm. Whoa, that's heavy. God deserves worship. Can you agree? You can say amen. When God worships, when man worships everything except God, it's time for a change, a shift, as you say. Yes, God deserves worship. What that, that change has been called many things, many titles, many names. And then let's forget about the word revive, or let's just re compare it to this now. In Genesis 28, verses 11, beginning with verse 11, we see that Jacob had a what? He had an encounter. He didn't have a revival. He had an encounter. He wrestled with God. Did he really? We recently heard a minister challenge us with the possibility that Jacob wrestled with himself. It says he wrestled with a man. We've always thought it was an angel. We always thought it was the Lord, didn't we? Think about it. If we're really going to have an encounter with God, we need to wrestle with our flesh. Come on now. These ideas might be new to you, but I'm telling you, I'm only saying what I hear the Father say. The Word says that Jacob wrestled with a man. Perhaps that man was himself. I'll leave that up to you and to God to show you. It, however, it left its mark on him, didn't it? He was changed. He walked with a limp from that time on. He was changed. He did, did not walk the same as he did before. So, this tells me if we have an encounter, a true encounter with God... It will leave us changed. And so I'm going to ask us a lot of questions tonight. And you'll need to get the tape because you'll need to listen to this over and over again. What kind of change will an encounter leave on us? Will we walk differently? Will we talk differently? Will our passions be differently? Will our thoughts be changed? Will our actions be different? You know... Uh, for so many years, I've seen the evangelists blow in, blow up, and blow out. And I'm sick and tired of it. I am, and they call that a revival? I don't think so. I don't think that's what God has in mind for this day and time. When I observe the revivals that, I have, occurred, that have occurred in the past, I hear many things. What brings a revival? And Papa will tell you, hunger and thirst is number one. Without hunger and thirst, you're not going to see a move of God. During the 80s, I remember attending a musical called The Prophet. Uh, a son from one of the families we were ministering to was performing in this production. And one of the songs attached itself to my spirit, and I just sang it over and over. It began the, to be the cry of my heart. I can remember walking through my house just singing, Oh, I want to know you more. Deep within my soul, I want to know you. Oh, I want to know you more. And that was it. I just sung it over and over. And even when I wasn't singing it inside my spirit, it was just going on like an unbroken record. It was just on instant replay constantly. This went on for at least two years. He said, to know you in the power of the resurrection, to be made conformable to your death, Everyone wants to live with Christ and reign with him, but few want to experience death with him. When, he wrote his, when Paul wrote his letters to the church at Ephesus, he explained so clearly that we are to identify with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, and that ultimately we must...